everybody. I wanted to quickly talk to you today about standard deviations. Obviously, I touched on standard deviations in my statistics video, but this is often an area where students stumble in a test, and I know that you've been calling out for a little bit of help. So, what I want you to do is go to our website, click Intro to Psych, and go to Textbook Chapter 2. Now, the book is out of print, which is why we're able to do this. Okay, so Chapter 2, I would like you to hit Command F and search Standard Deviation then scroll down until you are looking at this section of the textbook. Okay, so pause here if you need to do that now. Now, my video, I talked about standard deviation being a measure of variability. So it's about how varied the scores are in a particular data set. This textbook offers a really great explanation, so I really recommend that you pause this and read that explanation now. Um, but what we're going to talk about is the scenario question on the right hand side here, more specifically question two. Okay, so we are given a scenario, we have two psychology classes and they both sit an exam, so we've got the same test. They both received or they both earned 65%, so the mean of both classes was 65% and you remember that the mean is the average middle score, so it's the, the average of both classes. Okay, now we are then told that the teachers have calculated the standard deviation of both of their classes and class A found that they had a standard deviation of 1, class B found they had a standard deviation of 8. Now an important note here is that in year 12 psychology you will never be given a single standard deviation score. Okay, That's not in the scope of our, our course. You will always be given 2 and you'll, ask, you'll be asked to compare the two. So you're always talking about them in comparison in terms of lower or higher, never low or high. You'll never be asked, is one low? Is 20 high? Okay, it's always in comparison, which is awesome. So your question here is, on the basis of this additional information, what conclusions might the teachers now draw about the, the knowledge of students in each psychology class? Explain your answer. Okay. So to think about this scenario, both teachers have a mean of 65, okay, they haven't done very well but the teachers want more information. They then find that they have these differences in standard deviations. When we say it has a lower standard deviation, we mean that the scores are clustered more closely around the mean. And what this means in this scenario, if you have a mean of 65%, the scores in class A, so student scores, are more clustered closely around 65%. So students are getting 60%, 62, 65, 70, 71. Okay, scores are really close around 65%. So the classes all performed pretty similarly. We then look at class B, and if we compare that, they have a higher standard deviation, which means that the scores are more widespread around the mean. Okay, so they might have students who get... 50% or 49, maybe they've failed, it's been really awful, and you've also got 60%, um, then you've got 65, maybe you've got 70, 80, you might even have a student who gets 90%, okay? The key is not to get caught up in specifics because we don't know what 8 really means. It's about the scores in class B are more widespread than they are in class A. Okay. Now when it comes to answering this question in a test, the best way is to think of a key phrase that you can repeat in a test. Okay. And when I say that, I don't mean always give the same answer. I mean be prepared with a phrase and then be prepared to apply that to the scenario. And what you've been asked here is to talk specifically about their test scores, which you've been given, and to talk about what the teachers might now draw, so what conclusions the teachers might draw about the knowledge of students in each psychology class. So if you are just talking about scores and numbers, you are not going to get full marks. You have to talk about the teachers, the students, and their knowledge of psychology. So pause the video here, have a go at answering that question, and then play again when you're ready to hear my answer. Okay, so let's go through two possible answers that you could give. So, option number one, class A scores were clustered more closely around the mean of 65% to compare to class B's. So the teachers can conclude that class A have similar knowledge of the psychology topic to one another compared to class B. That's one possible answer. You could also have the following answer, which is the same, just flipped. 
Class B scores were more widespread around the mean of 65% compared to Class A's. So teachers can conclude that their psychology knowledge was more varied than Class A's. Now you'll note that in both of these answers, I've highlighted some key phrases and this is the really important message that you have to take away from this video. You're talking about clustering of scores or heights or grades or ATARs around the mean. So here we've got class A scores were clustered more closely around the mean and of course this can be applied to any scenario, it might not always be percentages, compared to. If you forget to compare, you're probably not going to get full marks. You always have to compare to the other class. Okay, and I've also applied it very carefully here to the scenario. So this is if you're looking at um, class A, so you're looking at the, the lower standard deviation. Here is if we're looking at the higher standard deviation, and so we're not talking about it clustering closely, we're talking about it being more widespread around the mean or from the mean. So more widespread around or from the mean compared to. Now always give the exact score, always give it meaning, whether it's a beat per minute, centimetres, kilograms, percentage, whatever it might be, and always compare it to the other data set. Hopefully this has given you a better idea of how to talk about standard deviation, okay, um, and good luck if you, are, if you encounter this in a test or an exam. Thanks guys.